All right, the next thing I want to talk a little bit about is some specific clarifications on some of the rules, and they're called a bulletin, okay? And the bulletins are numbered, and if you go to the website and Google Indiana Department of Insurance Bulletin, they've got all the bulletins there, and they release them constantly, and they update them. And a new bulletin that deals with the topic would obviously supersede a previous bulletin that's already listed. Okay, so for example, bullet, Bulletin 135 that deals with title insurance. A person shall not sell, solicit, or negotiate insurance in Indiana unless the person is licensed as an insurance producer. Okay, this comes about from years ago. People that were like you that were in the title insurance but were only selling it, they were the sales reps, weren't licensed. Okay. Then the Department of Insurance realized that, sure, go ahead, question. The question is, are they wasting their time? No, because you now are required to be licensed. See that, December 6, 2005? What they decided was a sales rep is actually quoting a premium. Quoting a premium. That should require a license. So that's what the clarification is. Any person who conducts a real estate closing on behalf of a title insurance producer or title insurance company in which a title insurance policy is issued must be a licensed insurance producer. So that's what required us to have title insurance for the license. All right. Up until then, you know, in the early 2000s, when I first got in, a sales rep was not a licensed insurance person okay and let's face it, that's what you're becoming you're becoming a licensed insurance it just so happens that the only insurance you're getting licensed for is title insurance whether you're a sales rep whether you're a closer whether you're a, uh, you know anybody else if you're quoting premiums i.e that's how much title insurance if you said oh yeah on a hundred thousand dollar house the premium is 450 bucks you just quoted a title insurance. Well, they deemed that through Bulletin 135 that if you quote or do any of this title insurance, you have to be a licensed title insurance person. So that's what this is doing. Bulletin 139 deals with the enforcement fund, all right? To provide a supplemental funding for the department, there's the TIF, I told you. A TIF is created by the following purpose, to provide supplemental income so that the DOI can actually fund the operations and to pay the cost of the staff. So here's the announcement that's dated 2006. You can see that it was passed by the General Assembly. It created what we call the Title Insurance Enforcement Fund, TIF. Uh, TIF is created. This goes back. We talked about what the enforcement fund was, who pays into it, and how it was created. There's the bulletin that actually did it for you. All right. Now, effective July the 1st of 2006, anyone purchasing the title policy shall pay the $5 into the TIF. And there's the what we talked about before. That was the bulletin. $2 goes to the admin. $3 goes to the fund. Um, it's for residential transactions. It must be reflected on the HUD-1 or the settlement statement, which is now called the closing disclosure, and the fees apply to all insurance policies, whether you're an owner's policy or a lender's policy. Okay, it doesn't matter. Any person or con company who conducts closing in which a title of insurance is issued or will be issued shall, shall facilitate the collection of the fees that must be remitted to the Department of Insurance. So while the DOI ends up with the money that I paid at my closing, the title company is the one responsible for doing that. Um, if they fail to charge me or fail to actually pay the DOI, there can be disciplinary actions and sanctions uh, against them. And the insurance money or the TIP money has to be paid directly to uh, the title division and it has to have all of the information so that they can attach that closing with that fund, all right? So <clears throat> they have to 
give it and they, and they label it so that you know it's a TIF fund and they give the policy number, the effective date, and the agent name and all of that. That way they can marry that fund up so that they know, hey, the title company A has submitted 300 closings this year and they have submitted, you know, $10 per closing. They have submitted their $3,000. Okay. Uh, you must include a worksheet that they have and they make payments on a quarterly basis. Now, they make payments on a quarterly basis so that you're not writing after every closing a $10 check to the Department of Insurance. All right. You do a, at the end of each quarter there, you can see April, July, October, and January. Remember, they work on a different year, so it's not the typical quarter that you're thinking of uh, because they work May 1st is the first of the year. So April 30th is the end of their fourth quarter. July 31st would be the end of their first quarter. They fill out the form and the worksheet and they say, hey, in this quarter we did, you know, 170 closings. Here's our $1,700. Uh, Bulletin 150. Deal, it changes the producer's license. All right, so this is a revision. All producer's license will be on a two year license and will expire on the last day of the month, two years from the date of issue. So the license that you guys are getting, if you get it before April, you'll get a probably a 2019 license. If you get it after that April uh, of 2017, uh, you'll get, well, if you get it before, you'll get probably the 2017 ex expiration. It depends how close you get your producer's license uh, to the end of the cycle. And they do that out of kindness. I mean, if you got your license April the 1st of 2017, which is still a ways away, they probably would not issue you one that expired in 2017. They would issue you one that expired in 2019. All right. Uh, it's going to cost you $40 if you're a resident. Everybody here is a resident of Indiana, right? All right, and you have continuing ed that is tied to your license. So you're going to, have to do uh, so many hours of continuing ed every two years to keep your license in a productive or knowledgeable state. Um, limited line producers with a title qualification and a two-year license will require to complete seven hours of continuing ed every two years. I know, I saw your hands up. And I ignored your question. Did it solve your question? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> you guys were going to ask how many hours. Well, I told you, seven hours every two years. Okay. And we here at uh, Real University do actually have some continuing ed. All right. So that was 150. Uh, let's take a recording break here, please. <laughs> 